Next from Chicago, Governor Rauner addresses the press on why he supports selling the Jim Thompson Center in downtown Chicago. He later takes questions on the budget stalemate, redistricting reform, and term limits. This runs about 20 minutes. Very good news for the taxpayers of Illinois. And we are announcing some doubly good news for the taxpayers for the city of Chicago. We intend to close and sell the state of Illinois building, the James R. Thompson Center, move our government employees out into existing space that the state of Illinois has in Springfield and in the city of Chicago, um, and put this building on the market to be sold to a private developer and have the property redeveloped as a more uh, impactful, positive commercial office building and retail space. This is a compelling financial gain for the people of Illinois and the city of Chicago. It takes a building, a structure that is in significant disrepair, is very ineffective and very inefficient for taxpayers. I won't comment on the aesthetics. People, you're, in, you're entitled to your own opinions. We'll leave that for you to discuss. But from a pure financial point of view, this is a compelling opportunity for the people of the state. This building is ineffective for the people who work here, all of whom are eager to move somewhere else. It's noisy. It's hard to meet with your colleagues. It's hard to move through the building. Very, very ineffective. Uh, noise from, from downstairs, smells from the food court, all get into the offices, most of which are open here. Very hard to conduct effective work uh, in this building. Very inefficient, large open space. Um, you as taxpayers are paying a fortune to heat and cool this space. Um, we have um, much uh, deferred maintenance. We've got over $100 million worth of deferred maintenance and repairs needed here in the next few years that are really not compelling to make. And the simple fact is that even discounting this open tube structure here, just looking at the office space itself, per employee, we occupy almost three times as much square footage per person here as in the regular office space in the loop and double what the other state buildings have per square foot per employee. Very wasteful, very inefficient use of space. The good news is we can get value for this building that's very material. I don't want to bias the public auction. We plan to hold a public auction, sell for cash this asset. Uh, we have talked to uh, various developers about it. The odds of being able to keep the structure in place as it exists very low. It's just not usable for much of anything. Uh, the good news is it's really just a few structural beams and some glass, so it doesn't cost that much to take down, and it could be re replaced by a very positive, very impactful new building. Um, and the good news for the taxpayers in the city of Chicago is this should generate, depending on the size of the new building put in here, something like $20 million per year in new city and school taxes for the benefit of local taxpayers. A lot of money. Because right now, as a government building, it is not on the city tax rolls. This does not generate tax revenue for the people of Chicago. It's very unfortunate because this is one of the most valuable, uh, nicest blocks in the entire state, let alone in the city of Chicago. Very compelling for the city folks and for the state residents. We're paying a lot of money for it to be ineffective. And we can move our hardworking government employees here uh, into space that's more attractive and more um, effective for them to be able to conduct the state's business um, as, as they go about it. We believe that depending on whether we move everybody into existing government space or whether we n lease new space, the savings per year, ignoring everything else, just purely occupation, uh, uh, occupancy costs, we can save anywhere between $6 million and $12 million a year. We could pay people to take this building from us and save a lot of taxpayer money. This is a compelling opportunity that we need right now. Frankly, irrespective of the financial duress that our state is under, this is a good management move. This is just the right thing to do financially, irrespective of the financial condition of the state. Obviously, we have budget trouble. Our goal would be to get this done in the next year.
to have a transaction done where we sell the building and move people out uh, over the summer and the, and the upcoming fall next year so we can be on and uh, lead to new value. We believe that rebuilding this structure can generate over 8,000 new construction jobs, generate much more retail sales, higher uh, retail sales per square foot in a redeveloped building, and save taxpayer money and help our government employees be more effective in their jobs. So we think it's a home run decision in every regard. So we look forward to keeping you informed as the process unfolds. We have received some appraisals. We expect to get a few more appraisals. Um, I don't want to go into that because we, we want to hold an auction, a public auction, and maximize the price. So we don't want to indicate what we've uh, been told. The building, uh, the land is basically worth, but it's attractive. We can get uh, good value for taxpayers by selling this building and moving out. Open it up to questions. How does this fit in with your well, this is just good management. This is getting value for taxpayers. A core thing we've got to do is drive value for taxpayers. And this is a major step in the right direction. As we get the state turned around, we've got to relieve taxpayer uh, pressure and the burden, and this is a good move to do that. Yes. Um, it's a fair question. She asked, uh, what, are, what, what are my comments about the architectural significance? It was, it's an helmet, uh, helmet Jan design building. That's all true. Um, uh, beauty's an eye of the beholder. Again, I'm not going to comment on the appearance or the aesthetics. Um, I believe that there's an opportunity to create a very architecturally significant, very functional, very value driving building here in its place. Um, I'm sure there are some folks who would say, boy, this ought to stay here in forever. Um, it's an important architectural significance. There are others who would disagree. We've got to uh, drive value for taxpayers. This, the taxpayers in the city of Chicago are under duress. The taxpayers in the state of Illinois are under duress. And I believe we can have an architecturally significant building here that is on everybody's tours and that drives real value. Governor, yes. Yeah, so we are conducting uh, just as part of the good management practices for the state, we're conducting a review of all the assets that are owned by the state of Illinois and trying to determine their value, their usefulness, whether we, we're maximizing the impact and the benefit for the taxpayers of the state. That's an ongoing process we'll be doing uh, on a continuous basis. Yes, yeah, CT? CT. Well, uh, again, I don't want to go into too much detail of my conversations with the mayor. We've had some very detailed conversations. I will say this. I am strongly opposed to the mayor raising property taxes on the people of Chicago without major structural reform, and he has not instituted major structural reform. So I'm opposed and I'm not supportive of his, any of his tax increase effort. Greg, Greg, you were asking. Huh? It's compelling. And I believe, I hope and believe that the members of the legislature care about taxpayers in Illinois. Yes. Um, that's not really the driving force of this. I would imagine that some of the state employees who work here uh, may well move to Springfield. That's not the major impetus. I imagine that will be part of the process. We're going to look uh, at the relative cost of pe people being in different locations and the effectiveness. We want each department to be to have the be best impact, the best work environment for the members uh, who work in the, uh, uh, for the people of Illinois. And many will, many will remain here in Chicago. I imagine uh, some will move to Springfield. You have not done that cost-benefit ratio analysis of moving people into different uh, locations versus centralized location? Uh, we've done a lot of that work, yes. So what, what is the cost-benefit? So, so here, let's get to uh, the short summary. So right now, relative to the cost in the regular office market, the, the average market downtown, we're paying triple per person. We're paying tr three times as much here as we would if we were just did this as a normal office lease here. And we're paying double, twice as much here for state employees as we do compared to other state employees in other buildings. So on, by any measure, we're high cost here and need to move. Now the mix between folks who should stay in Chicago versus folks who should move to Springfield, that's a function of the department heads deciding where they want their people to be and what, what maximizes their effectiveness. And that's a discussion that will be ongoing. Yeah, so we have, I have personally discussed this uh, with Speaker Madigan. 
I've personally discussed this with President Cullerton. Uh, they have, they're both, want to learn more of the detail, but they're both, I would, I would call them forward-leaning and positive on, on this. I've discussed it with the mayor in some detail. I would describe him as forward-leaning and positive on this. Our staff has talked to Attorney General Madigan and to Secretary uh, of State Jesse White. I, would, I don't want to uh, presuppose their comments. I will leave that to them. But I would, I would say that they are very open and positive and forward-leaning. Our staff has also uh, um, had a discussion with um, former Governor Thompson, as well as architect Helmut Jan, let them know of our decision and our action. Um, they appreciate the phone call and, uh, look, and the communication. Um, I'll say two things. One, I frankly uh, want to make sure we maximize value here. That's the most important thing. Um, and I can't comment on what a private developer would think is the way to maximize the value here. I would guess it's a very large mixed use where that has uh, office space, residential space, and a lot of high-end retail. That's my guess, but I, I'm going to leave this to the market, hold a, uh, an open auction. A casino is a completely separate topic. I know others have brought this up, like move a casino into this existing building. No one that I've spoken with, and I know folks across many sectors, believe this building is functional for anything as in its existing form. I have indicated to the mayor and others on this completely unrelated topic of a casino for Chicago. I'm open-minded to that. It has nothing to do with this particular location. Um, well, let me say a couple things. So we've got about 2,200 employees in the, for the state government here in this building. Uh, we have many, many thousands around Chicago and many, many thousands, um, tens of thousands in Springfield. Um, we have roughly, I think, 280 um, non-government employees in this building. Um, the mix of where people should move, can we put them all, can we put all 2,200 people into existing office space? We're looking at it. We might be able to. That would save us the most money. Um, but we want to make sure that it's a good work environment or maximizing productivity. And we can't say yet that everybody will go into existing space. Some will, some won't. Uh, as far as I know, that hasn't come up. Now, Don't know. Now that, now that you've renewed your conversations with Senate President Cullerton and Speaker Madigan about the building, have they accepted your offer of, I think, two weeks ago to discuss further the budget impasse and the turnaround again? Um, well, I'll say a couple things. Uh, I've learned over the last nine months that discussing our conversations, their timing, the nature, who's in them, with the, with the media is, uh, tends to be counterproductive. So I've specifically not been doing that. Uh, your presupposition pre, uh, pre that we haven't been talking until recently is not correct. Um, and all I'll say is the conversations have been uh, uh, going on and they're continuing to be ongoing. And we're making some progress. Leader Durkin said two weeks ago on my TV show that he hadn't had any discussions, you and uh, the Democratic leaders and the Republican leaders for about since the end of May. And he said a week or so before that, two weeks ago, you had this, you had made an offer, and he and Redonia were ready to meet, but Speaker Madigan and Carlton weren't. Did Leader Durkin get that wrong? I won't comment on whatever he said. I'm not familiar with it. Yes. There's some concern that the state in its revenue flow is going to be short on some revenue for bond payments or pension payments in the coming months. Are you what what payments did you want to see short of? Um, well, I'll say a few things about our budget situation. I am very, very upset and displeased uh, that we don't have a budget yet. It's inexcusable. There's really no good reason for it. Um, we are doing everything within our ability to make sure the government runs, meets its obligations, despite not having a budget. And I give huge compliments to our senior team and our department heads and all the team, the hardworking men and women who work for the people of Illinois. We've done a heck of a job keeping the government mostly running very well despite no budget. Um, we are working hard to get a budget. What we should not do is purely focus on raising taxes and not get any structural reforms. We cannot afford to do that. <laughs> Well, one thing I wouldn't do is discuss that with you now, uh, but I'll say this. We are going to have the government running effectively all the way through as long as is necessary. And let's, let's, let, let's, let's focus, because I need you guys to focus on what's mat what matters here. We need a budget. 
We need to get structure reform. And when someone says to you that our requests or our recommendations for reform are extreme, I hope you'll ask them what they mean by that. The vast majority of the people of Illinois, Democrats and Republicans, support term limits, not extreme. The vast majority of voters, Democrats and Republicans in Illinois, support redistricting reform, not extreme. The vast majority of states have passed laws, Democrats and Republicans, to limit forced higher wages on, on taxpayer-funded construction projects, not extreme. The vast majority of states, Democrats and Republicans, have taken things out of collective bargaining inside government. And Il Democrats in Illinois have done that, not extreme. So don't buy the argument that it's extreme. And when people say, gosh, the governor's got, an, he's trying to hurt the middle class in Illinois, call him on it. I won't use the language I would use. You can choose your own. But that is not the case. The middle class in Illinois is not helped by big government bureaucracy. The middle class in Illinois is not helped by higher taxes. The middle class in Illinois is not helped as we're pushing job creators out of this state. And that's what the status quo is doing. And our, at, and our program changes that dynamic. And when someone says to you that our recommendations violate the core beliefs of the Democratic Party, tell them that is not the case. Democrats support term limits, Democrats support redistricting reform, and Democrats in this state and in the federal government and in many other states have taken things out of collective bargaining inside government. This is not a violation of the Democrats' core beliefs. Not true. Call them on it. And when someone says to you, well, the governor's advocating for things that aren't related to the budget, tell them, baloney. Not true. This is related to the budget. We have politicians in office who aren't responsive to the voters and are raising taxes without reform because we need term limits, because we need redistricting reform, because we need to take power out of the government bureaucracy and give it to the voters and the taxpayers. This is all about the budget. And they used to say in the spring, they used to say that a property tax freeze wasn't related to the state budget, so we don't talk about it. Then they found out that the people of Illinois want a property tax freeze very badly. Then they voted for it. They kind of, they did a flip-flop, and they did that because they knew people wanted it, but they could do it on a phony way. They could just do a freeze without any structural change to make the freeze long-lasting, and then the property taxes would go through the roof two years later. They knew it was a phony reform. They voted for it after saying it wasn't related to the state budget. We've got baloney going on, ladies and gentlemen, the arguments. I need you to call it so we stop it and we get a budget with real reforms. Last question. If it's true that Democrats and people of Illinois do support all these things, how do you <laughs> All I can say is I don't pay attention to polls. And everywhere I go in the state, I got people coming up to me by the hundreds. Stay strong, Governor. Don't back down, Governor. I get people coming up to me and say, I'm a Democrat. I've never voted for a Republican in my life. I didn't even vote for you. But you know what? You're doing what needs to be done. You're saying what needs to be said. Don't back down. Thanks very much, everybody. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.